in Erev Shabbos, Parshas Pekude, Parshas Shabbos Chazak. It's not one of the Dalit Parshas because we have our leap year, but it's, a, it's definitely a, a special Parsha. This is the Parsha where we put up the Mishkan, we set it all up, and uh, it, it finally happens. We're finally, we're, we're, we're good to go. Moshe Rabbeinu sets it up, and there's, there's a few interesting things about the Parsha. Uh, while a lot of it is repetitive, it keeps on saying an additional phrase at the end of each stage, and it says that Kalei Yisrael did uh, again and again. What's with the repetition? So I think we could tie this into the end of the parasha. The reason why it keeps repeating Kashar Tiva Hashem as Moshe, because then Kalei Yisrael is finally putting up the Mishkan. This is the Mishkan that was a kapara for the ego. What happened at the ego? At the ego, we started making our own chashbonus, our own kunsim. We should do this, we should do that, we need to connect to Hashem, we don't have our Moshe, how do we connect to Hashem with our Moshe? Oh, we build an ego, I have a design, I'm so geschmack. Okay, you know, you know, it's Lashus Lashem, Fir Tarashem. When we're getting a kapara for, the, for that Avera, the kapara is going to be that we don't add our own cheshbon into this. This is going to be what Hashem told Moshe, that's what we do, period, end of story. That was, the, that was the reason why the Mishkan was Mechaber. Moshe Rabbeinu puts up the Mishkan. Moshe Rabbeinu, Shosh and Ahana Shomu was Chochma. He gave over exactly what Hashem gave to us. It was a translucent Neshama. There was no tainting Bechlau. That's why he was the one to give over the Torah. If there's, if there's someone who would give over the Torah and put his own spin on it, it's not Dvar Hashem anymore. Moshe Rabbeinu put up the Mishkan. Why did we bring the Mishkan to him to put up? So Rashi says, Majestan Chuma, that he didn't do anything in the Mishkan. I, obviously, he was, you know, the CEO of it, but he didn't actually do anything. So they finally, after they have everything all, all, all there, everything's collected, everything's built, everything, everything is assembled, you just have to put it up. But, but it's impossible. It was humanly impossible. So bring it to Moshe. Okay? You didn't get to do anything here. You get to do this. <laughs> the, you get to do the impossible part. So Moshe just turns to the bunch of them and says, what do you want from me? It's not humanly possible. I, these questions are massive. You know, these are oak trees. Uh, they're, you know, shlep, you know, planted in the tribe. And like, these are huge. And, and I would just, just my job, everyone's going to back off and let me do this. So, Moshe, so Hashem says, you do an ASIC with your hands. Just, do, just do, do your ASIC. You know, you go to work. You do your job. It'll happen by itself. But I said, that's always what happens. You do, you do your thing. The Rosh does everything else. That, that, that's what's been happening since since it has been trying. You think Moshe Rabbeinu picking up a stick did anything? You do what you need to do. You do your part. The Moshe takes care of everything else. Everything happens, may I love. And this is that final, the last pasuk in the in in, in Sefer Shemois, the whole transformation of Klal Yisrael from Mitzrayim to you know Vayikra to being Klal Yisrael, to being Am, to Am Yisrael. We hopped. You know, they had, we had the Amoresh and the Anana covered, and they, it was walking with us, and we saw their Baruch Shalom, Le'ein Nekol Yisrael. We, 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 the Le'ein Nekol Yisrael, the end of the parasha, we finally, with the end of the Torah, at this stage, we hopped, it was, we, we, we were able to like actually see that every step that Baruch Shalom had done for us, it was all him. Morning and night, Erev Avaykav at Zaharayim, all we were doing was just an Asak, Maisa, everything happened, Mail of the Baruch Shalom took care of everything. Be'ez Hashem, we should be Zayicha, to be able to see the Yad Hashem. Let me give you a shikol I just heard from Rav Zechariah Wallerstein. There's a guy who his friend asked him to borrow $10,000. He wasn't so close with this guy. He didn't feel like giving him $10,000. But you know, it's Mitzvah Der Raiso. And the guy really needed it. You got it. When do I get it back? A week. A week? Okay, I can handle a week. So, a week later, he's waiting. Doesn't hear anything back from him. Okay, two weeks later, he gives him a call. The guy says, no, it's tied up, this and that. Don't worry, I'll have it back to you within the month. Okay? A month goes by, nothing. By a year, the guy's already miyayish. Two years after he lent him the money, he gets a call from the guy. The guy's in Williamsburg, this guy lives in Queens. And he says, or vice versa, whatever it was, he says, you know what, I don't have 10 grand for you, but I pulled together $5,000. If you come now, mamash now, I have the $5,000 with me, but I'm leaving in half an hour. So, he says, you know what, deal. I don't care if I never even see the other 5,000. Right now you have five, I'm taking it. And he gets in his car and he drives as fast as he can. He's flying on the BQE and a cop pulls him over. He's sitting in the car waiting for the state trooper to come and, you know, uh, give him his, his din. And uh, he's sitting in the car and he's saying, what are you doing to me? I did a mitzvah. 
I lent this guy money, no ribbis, no nothing. There was nothing to gain. I knew it was gonna be trouble. And now I'm fine. Now I'm getting what? I'm getting back half. I'm getting back half. This guy thinks he's such a side to give me back something. And you're gonna throw, you're gonna throw a speeding ticket on there? Like, come on, I'm, I'm like, I'm mama's always a mitzvah. State trooper comes over and he says, license registration. You know, your mom's like a menace to society driving at the speed in the BQE. So he tells him, look, officer, I'll give you license registration. Do what you need. I have to tell you, I have 15 minutes to get to this guy or I'm never going to see my money again. I lent this guy $10,000 and he, he, he's, he's, he's dripping me off. He's, he's not paying it back. It's not happening. But if I get to him now, maybe I, he says he'll give me five. The cop says, I don't believe you. You just lent this guy $10,000. You don't know, no nothing. Like... He says, he's a yid, what are we? Says, I don't believe you. He says, you don't believe me? Look, I'll make you a deal. This is, my, this, is, this is what's happening. I'm going to his apartment now. Come with me. Tell me if it's true. You'll see. You'll meet the guy. You'll see the $5,000. Hopefully it's there, right? If it's true, you let me off the hook. If not, throw me in jail. I'm a menace, yeah? So, <laughs> cop says you have a deal. He gives him that dress, and he escorts him. Lights and sirens. He drives ahead, and the guy follows him over to this, uh, to the, the Loiva's house. He comes inside, knocks on the door. The guy opens the door. He sees him there, he says, ah, I have your $5,000. Suddenly this cop comes out from behind him, a state trooper with the big hat and the poofy boots and the whole thing. And the guy starts shaking. He says, well, you brought the cops on my, you, you know, I, 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 I have another five, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it together. I have the whole 10, I have the whole 10. He comes back, he gives him the full $10,000 and Shalom Israel. See. <laughs> His job is just to be mamin. You do what you can. I'm supposed to lend money, I'll lend money. It's time to collect, I'll go collect. The Baron, he thought that the Bernstein was sending him a speeding ticket. The Bernstein was sending him a cop. He was sending him his other $5,000. We should be able to see the Yad Hashem like that. To see that we're just doing what we're doing. We're just doing an A second. The Bernstein was taking care of mamish, everything else. <laughs> Wonderful Shamas.